Welcome to Dirt, Sweat, and Gears, your Rage Yoga session of automotive physical therapy. We are here with what is the third or the fourth installment, depending on how you look at it, of my Prelude Suspension Project. Uh, we have just finished the front suspension, doing all of the bushings and the wheel bearings and the ball joints and tie rod ends. And now we have the car turned around and we are getting ready to do the rear end. Uh, phrasing? So this is a four wheel steering prelude. So not only does it have a weird rear suspension just by being a prelude, but the fact that it's four wheel steering means that there is quite a bit more going on in the back. So what that means is that while I had a really hard time on the front, um, I'm not necessarily on the downhill in the rear. That said, the real challenge here is that this is a rare car. Um, weird to think about, for me anyway. Parts for the rear end especially are very hard to find in four wheel steering flavor. First, I have a bit of a logistical problem here. You might see just to the edge of the frame here, I've got my motorcycle here. It's actually kinda hard to wiggle in and out uh, of this space because I have to turn it a lot to get it out from behind the TR7. So I need to move things a little bit I obviously also need to clean things uh, uh, more than a little bit, I gotta admit. Uh, but before I start working on this car, I need to take care of some things around the garage so that my experience over the next week, although for being honest here, it's gonna be more like six weeks, um, I want it to be a little more comfortable. So let's get started. So we got everything cleaned up good enough. Uh, it's time to move the TR7. Uh, before I do that, I just have to reconnect the battery and then close this insanely heavy trunk lid. And hopefully it'll start. I'm kind of afraid to close the trunk though because in case I have to run and pull that. Well, whatever. Hopefully nothing catches on fire. And also hopefully the car freaking stops. So there is a little bit of brake pressure, but uh, let's we'll just have to play this by ear, I guess. And the seat is <laughs> not bolted down. Hey, it started. Now, can I move it? I can. I probably want to shut it down after this. All right, we're going to shut it down. I don't want it to get too hot. That was fun. Well, that was fun. Now I can get started on the prelude. I'll check in with you once I got the car off the ground and get the wheels off. So now we're underneath the car and obviously everything's dirty. I mean, it, it's, it's a car. Um, before I take the wheels off, I wanted to confirm the uh, wheel bearing, the ball joints and the tie rod ends. And sure enough, when I wiggle the wheels, both wheels left and right, I've got a little bit of a play on my inner tie rod ends, which is not surprising. This is a very old steering rack. Uh, these are probably the original inner tie rods. So this is gonna suck. Um, first of all, the tie rods themselves are gonna be uh, pretty tricky to track down, but even more so, these boots are really gonna suck. I have no idea what to do about these boots. Then a couple other observations. Uh, I have an exhaust leak right up there. You see water dripping out of it. Uh, it's not terrible, but I think while I'm in here, uh, I could free up some space by dropping the exhaust can and uh, that section of pipe and replacing the gasket while I have it open. And also I noticed, well, I've been noticing this driving for the past 10 years that the uh, exhaust hangers are in really bad shape. So if it moves enough, 
uh, it's not doing it right now because the car is off the ground but if it moves enough it actually does hit the frame over here and that's because the rubber hanger on the other side is really really uh, flexible uh, just like these rubber hangers up here they it's it's amazing they haven't torn it really is amazing they haven't torn so i've got the entire passenger side rear knuckle out if you're not familiar with the four wheel steering prelude the rear knuckle really does look like the front knuckle of a rear wheel drive car so you get that sealed dust cap there for uh, the bearing itself and um, well i think to remove this ball joint this cap has to come off and then uh, I should be able to pop it out just like I did with the front. You can see it's uh, it's actually less of an insane shape, but it's still kind of a silly, awful shape to maneuver. So I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have an interesting time replacing that ball joint. Here's the uh, lower control arm, and it is it is it's not terrible. Uh, I guess the inner is definitely. Uh, on its way out, but the outer was not as bad uh, Radius rod is off and it was squeaking just as much as the front uh, here is the Upper arm and the upper ball joint the upper ball joint. Uh, this was pretty new um, This was probably 10 years old uh, Less than a hundred thousand miles. But I'm gonna replace it anyway This doesn't squeak at all the front squeaked a lot But the rear doesn't I'm going to drop that anyway, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. And I have to clean up my case ports. Um, this was uh, coilovers. This is a case port coilover from the very first production run of case ports. So uh, it is definitely dirty. It, I, I'm, I'm going to take a closer look just to make sure it doesn't need to be replaced because I did have one blow out on me. And so I'm going to check uh, both of them while I'm in here. I forget which one went out. I forget which one I had to replace. But uh, while we're in here, once we clean this up, uh, we're going to turn this out a few threads. At least, uh, hopefully, we have the threads to turn out and uh, try to raise the rear up a little bit. But we're going to deal with that when we're closer to putting this car together. I want to get everything cleaned up first. And next up down here, we've got the sway bar. This is my white line sway bar. You can see the bushing is, uh, well, you, I mean... It's obvious the sway bar does a lot of work. Um, I'm going to try to find a new bushing. I'm not going to sweat it too much, but if I can find uh, end link bushings for, or not end link bushings, but the sway bar end bushings for this car, I will. But again, this is a white line, so it might be a different size. And then lastly, we've got the rack itself, the rear tie rod. Uh, this was interesting. When I separated it, the... Uh, cast on that just broke off. So this might have been a cheap tie rod end. We'll see once we get it off the car So in order to drop the upper control arm, I gotta move some things out of the way First I got to move this speaker and then I'm gonna disconnect the battery and while I'm at it I'm gonna hook the battery up to a tender uh, and once I get that off I gotta take this off and then uh, bring the uh, paneling back. I have to disconnect uh, this bolt for the uh, rear strut bar uh, is one of the control arm bolts and then it's that one and then just another one either over there or over to the left. I, I forget which. We'll find out once we get in it. But it's pretty straightforward. Once I drop those bolts this thing will come right out and uh, be able to take it to the shop because I am not I, I, I'm not about to do that. I'm not about to cut those sleeves and spend all that time. So I did have one little hiccup the radius rod uh, bolts uh, did have some damaged threads a little bit. So uh, before I put that back together, I'm going to try to straighten out those threads and uh, run a tap through the hole that they go into uh, just to clean it all up and hopefully I won't have any problems. And then once I remove the uh, driver's side, I'm going to drop the rack itself. And once I drop the rack, I'll be able to uh, remove the inner tie rods. And I got to be very, very careful about that boot because I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a replacement. So I'm going to clean everything up as much as I can and then uh, put grease all along the uh, tie rod and try to slip that thing off without tearing it. 
I've got the driver's side rear suspension taken apart mostly. I still have to take off this radius rod. And I have have started cleaning things up a bit. So I've also dropped the rear rack. You see the uh, drive shaft, not drive shaft. You see the steering shaft just kind of hanging out there. Uh, but also missing the subframe. I've taken out the subframe. That actually made removing the rear rack a lot easier. So I was trying to disconnect the steering shaft from the rear rack and um, I had a little bit of a problem. So first off, I stripped out the bolt. So I have pretty much a similar problem that I had up front. I have to take off that U-joint and repair the threads on it. Uh, but also once I did get that bolt out, I was having trouble removing the rack. And uh, once I removed the rear subframe, I guess the added weight of the subframe just kind of dragged it all out and uh, it had no problem coming out from there. Over here on my uh, workbench TR7, I have got uh, most of the other parts I need. I've got the radius rod bushings. I've got new exhaust hangers. I'm really kind of um, on the fence about these exhaust hangers. They are very, very, very stiff. I wanted something a little bit stronger than rubber, but these like have no flex. So uh, I am, we'll see how that goes. We'll play that one by ear. Um, ball joints, uh, these are upper ball joints, uh, tie rod ends and bushings. We've got most of what we need. So these parts are almost ready to go to the shop to have them remove the old bushings but I am also waiting on wheel bearings, so I wanna have them do it all at once. And when he does the wheel bearings, I'm gonna ask him to leave these dust caps off so that I can change out the ball joints. Moving on outside, you see I've got some parts that I've already painted. Uh, this is the rear subframe, and this is one of the brackets for the sway bar. I noticed just a little bit of surface rust here and there, nothing to really get worried about. So I hit that with the wire wheel uh, and then did two layers of primer, and I am also going to use rubberized undercoating just to make sure this is all nice and protected before I put it back in the car. I started to clean up underneath the car, and I really don't want to go overboard on this thing, but there are some spots that need some attention. Uh, first off was this bracket that I had to cut out to fit the four-wheel steering. Uh, this is something that everybody that converts their two-wheel steering car to four-wheel steering has to do. Uh, it's not a very clean solution that I've done, but uh, I could have done much, much better. But this was, you know, 24-year-old me converting his car to four-wheel steering. I still have to pull this out, but I also have to get the front of the car up off the ground so I can disconnect the other side. Over here, kind of the same story, just cleaning up and looking out for any spots of surface rust, which I actually found back here. So there was a little bit of surface rust here. Uh, I took the wire wheel to that, cleaned right off. So uh, nothing to be really concerned about. Just, you know, when you find it, you fix it. And I kind of just went down the line here because of my little uh, oopsie on Angela's Crest Highway. And I found a little bit more surface rust over here-ish and over here. Uh, so I've actually started to bend this back out a little bit. It was like kind of folded over. Uh, so I bent that out a little bit, wire wheeled it, and um, I got to do a little bit more prep before I can uh, squirt some primer on it. And I'm just going to do primer, two coats of primer, and then um, rubberized undercoating. You see, we've got just, you know, this is... This is probably the worst part of it here because this was supposed to be panel bonded together. So it might be worthwhile to get some panel bond and fill that hole. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been making progress on the car. The first thing that I learned was that these, um, my fear was justified because there is just no flex, which means I can't use these. There's no way to get these on the car. They need at least a little bit of give in order to get the exhaust hung on the car. I might be able to use a couple of them depending on what pieces they are. Um, I'm gonna try to actually use it for the mid pipe because uh, the mid pipe is dropped. Uh, you'll notice that the front of the car is off the ground and uh, I have dropped the mid pipe. Another thing I noticed here was that the flex pipe for my 
downpipe is uh, really damaged and it's really, really, really bad. So on the other side where you can't really see, but I can pretty much just stick my finger right in the thing. So I am trying to track down another downpipe. Uh, the one that is on Rock Auto uh, says it's in stock. They lied. I just got an email saying that they don't have it in stock. So I'm actually trying another order from carparts.com. And uh, we'll see what that turns up. Eventually I'll find one. Uh, the replacements were made. Uh, there were definitely plenty of them made. So I might be able to find one. So these are the U-joints for the steering shaft. Uh, this is for the front. This is for the rear. Uh, you could tell that this is for the front because this is the one I took the wire brush to. So the one on the front has just the slightest amount of give. The one on the rear feels tight, but uh, there is just as much corrosion. Uh, and I have to clean this up. Uh, there's a little bit of corrosion, and it's like it was at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, the, the donor car was not in good shape. So the donor car that I got the four-wheel steering system out of was uh, in really bad shape. So this is one of those parts. Uh, I did take them down to the lunatic down the street that uh, did some work for my Jeep parts, my, my uh, rear uh, drive shaft on my Jeep. Uh, I just wanted to get his opinion just to make sure that, that uh, I didn't need to do anything. He took a look at them, felt them out, and he said they're fine. He just said, you know, don't touch them. I am touching them, obviously. I'm going to clean them up. Because just putting a little grease in the middle here will help keep corrosion at bay. It will repel water. So I'm going to do just a little bit beyond cleaning it up. And then I'll squirt some paint on it and uh, it'll be done. The good thing about the grease too is that uh, the paint also won't stick to it. So if I put grease all up in here, I can spray this and I won't really have much to worry about. My exhaust I have cleaned up and polished using uh, Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish. Uh, it's right there. It is heavy metal polish. So uh, that cleaned up really well. It's not perfect, but it is very, very nice. Uh, this is an LSD Motorsports exhaust. This is actually the uh, prototype. Uh, he built the prototype on my car, and this is the very first unit that was test fit. It doesn't even have his logo on it. So this is not just any potato cannon. This is a really cool one-of-a-kind potato cannon on the back of my car. Underneath here, you see I have a little bit more spraying to do. Uh, there's a spot that I did not spray. It's just some uh, gray primer. Um, I have to do rubberized undercoating on some of these spots. I did not clean up the uh, bracket because why? Uh, no one's going to look at it. They're all going to be looking at my steering rack pumpkin going, ooh, it's four-wheel steering. Yeah, they, no one's going to see that. It's fine. So I'm just going to spray this with rubberized undercoating and it will look much more fresh. Back to the lifestyle of waiting on parts. Uh, so far I have redone the radius rod bushings and they're just hanging there. I actually pointed them upside down just so uh, I can remind myself that I need to tighten the nut up front. I'm going to do that once I have the suspension ready to go back together. Uh, I don't want to do that now and then run into a problem later where I have to undo it again. And over here I have uh, finished repainting and cleaning up the U-joints for the uh, steering shaft. And I've also re-tapped the holes, I've cleaned up the threads on these things. So uh, once I get some replacement bolts, I'll be able to put this right back in. Um, and I was right about the grease. It really did uh, keep it from uh, having the paint stick to it. So all I really had to do after I painted it was wipe it off and then uh, clean it up and reapply grease. So I'm just going to leave it like this because this will help prevent corrosion. It will uh, just, uh, you know, not do anything harmful uh, to have a little bit of grease on this like this. And it can only help us in the long run. Uh, I've also sprayed clear coat on this thing so it's uh, good and cured and hopefully it won't rust anymore at least not for another you know 50 years or something like that so i brought the rear rack over to my workbench and i have managed to remove the boots uh, i had to very very carefully uh, pop the ring off of uh, the outer edge of the boot and then i was able to slip it past this little notch on the tie rod 
And once I got that off, I just had to make sure this was all cleaned up so that uh, it really had a, a nice surface to slide off. I also put a little bit of grease on it just so that I wouldn't risk tearing the boot. That was my biggest concern because uh, the boots are actually pretty healthy, uh, surprisingly, uh, which is great because I cannot find a replacement. There is no replacing these boots. So I'm gonna to try to salvage the boots that I have and the new tie rods are going to come in in a couple of days. So that gives me a little bit of time to clean things up. I'm not going to remove the existing tie rod ends until the new ones arrive because that just sounds like a horrible idea. Let's go take a look at the boots because they're pretty gross. So you can see here there's a bit of grease on the inside. That's fine, that's normal. I'm just gonna clean that out and uh, put new grease in it when I go to put it back on. Uh, but on the outside here, we have got lots of crap on it. Uh, but luckily, the boot is not cracking. It is really nice and soft. It is. Uh, it seems to be in great shape. So if I can clean this up uh, very carefully, and put some uh, new grease kind of in it, on it, around it. Uh, I think it's gonna go back together just fine. But we'll see in a couple of days. Uh, while I wait for those uh, tie rods, I'm gonna clean these up. I pulled off the intermediate pipe and I just wanted to show you how bad it is. Uh, right here, it's banged up really bad. And the uh, flex thing around it looks like it's going to come out. Uh, you can see there's definitely an exhaust leak here. So uh, this is this is not very good. And the downpipe itself is pretty smashed up. Uh, I had it cut open and re-welded because the pipes uh, broke a long time ago. And that was kind of one of the first things I did to it. On this side, the bracket to the subframe or the engine block, I think it's the engine block, is just completely gone. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to reattach the new one, uh, but here is the new one. And you can see they are, well, I, I suppose they're gonna be functionally the same. Uh, there are definite visual differences, but I don't think any of that's gonna be a deal breaker. There are a few things that I'm missing, uh, literally a few things. Uh, this uh, did not come on the new one, the little seal that keeps this from leaking, both in the back and up front. Uh, I tried to, remove them because the ones up front are new but i don't think that's happening and i think replacements are cheap enough that i should just get the new ones and wait another four days for that part to arrive uh, i suppose i could spend the four days peeling off the sticker from the factory uh, because that's about how long it'll take to peel off the sticker so let's take a look at the rear steering rack now that i have removed the tie rods uh, we can uh, kind of maneuver this a little bit better. That's why I'm not putting the uh, new tie rods right back on. Uh, it's just so much easier to handle uh, since I'm still cleaning things, checking things out. And uh, I do have the new tie rods. They're ready to go on, but I'm still waiting on the bellows. Uh, the bellows should arrive pretty much any day, any minute. Uh, hopefully today would be great. Uh, but I want to talk to you real quickly about the steering lock pin. Now the entire Prelude community says, buy this tool, it's a $70 tool, buy this tool, it's the four wheel steering alignment tool. Uh, I don't have it. And look, my rack is locked. You wanna see what I did? I'm gonna pop this off. Uh, the uh, bolt to close it up, uh, we had slotted because it was an Allen bolt and it was started to uh, round out. So we just uh, put a slot in there so you could just use a screwdriver. And then I believe there's a little washer. The washer is right here. It's just a bolt and a washer. And then inside the rack, I've got, boom. So this is what I have that locks my steering rack. It is just a little dowel pin. Let's see if I can measure that for you. Let's see if I can measure that for you. It is about, what, five millimeters? Yeah, five millimeters. That's about it. And it is, how long it is? And it is, how long? This is about 35, 34 millimeters long. Uh, this, is, this is all you need. 
You don't need to spend 75 bucks. You just uh, need a little need a little steel dowel. So obviously you don't want to forget to remove this because if you leave this in there, you won't be able to turn the wheels. But if you're not an idiot, uh, there's pretty much no chance of that happening because you're going to find out really quick if you forgot to leave this in. The car won't turn. Turning is important. It's kind of like one of the first things you do when you start a car. So to put this in, it's really straightforward. I just had to find center and uh, it was a combination of counting how many turns there was. And also when you get in there really close, I wanna see if I can show you with the camera. Yeah, this is great. Uh, when you get in there really close, you can see there's that space that opens and closes. Just a little space that when you go too far, you see it kind of opening and then, oh, I lost my window of opportunity. Yep, there it is. So uh, you want to get it right there and then you just drop this in and you might need to wiggle it around so that it falls into place. There you go. And of course, if you're under the car, you're going to be pushing this and uh, maybe even turning the wheels also. So you push this in and you just put this cap on and boom, you can do your limit. Done. Easy. Easy peasy. And in all honesty, I'll probably still buy the tool anyway just because it's a neat little thing to have. But functionally, this will do the job just fine. And if you're hard up on cash, uh, this is the way to go because that tool is a lot of money. So just in time for the long holiday weekend, I get to celebrate my freedom by exercising my right to repair on my Honda Prelude. My steering knuckles are back with the new bearings. My control arms are back with no bushings. So now I get to clean this all up just like I did for the front end. And the only difference is gonna be that uh, the knuckles are gonna be a little bit more challenging to remove the ball joint. I may have to pull the nut and uh, drop out the hub, uh, but that's not gonna be a big deal because the bearing's pressed in and it's not gonna hurt anything by backing out this nut and dropping it down so that I can have clearance. That's pretty much the only complication I can see happening here. Hopefully it'll go pretty smoothly, but you know, I've got four days, so I'm gonna have as much fun as I can. So I got it in, I have succeeded. I am really happy because now we're back on track to get this car back together. So my biggest fear was that I wasn't gonna be able to get the hub out of the way. I thought that I might be able to just drop it out, but uh, that wasn't the case. It is actually pressed in to the bearing. Uh, however, all I needed to do was remove the nut to get enough clearance to get everything to slide in and out. Uh, I had to get a little creative with the ball joint press set yet again. And by the way, Scott, uh, if you're watching this, I'm sure you are. Um, I found out the right answer to your comment about the C-clamp. So this is a C-clamp. This C-clamp is part of a ball joint press set. There you go. So anyway, uh, this is what makes it, this specific configuration is what makes it more than just a C-clamp. It's got the hole at the top so that the uh, ball joint uh, threads can move through when you're pressing it in and uh, it all worked out really well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more grease in this, uh, clean everything up, put it back together, and I'm gonna move on to the other side because once I'm done with this, I can return this ball joint press set and they can put it out to pasture. So I probably shouldn't even be showing you this because then you're gonna do some damage and then you're gonna blame me. But uh, I'm gonna first start by saying I'm not responsible for any damage you do from my stupid ideas. This is probably a really bad idea, but I was having a problem where when I was driving the nut, the hub would keep turning and I need something to stop the hub from turning while I was driving that nut. And luckily there is a device that has four holes for you to bolt that nut right into. And that I'm talking about is a wheel. Um, I'm going to say this, if you do this, try to find a steel wheel, try to find something that you don't care about being damaged. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of such wheels. All I have is the wheel that came with the car. So I bolted it up to my road of wheels and um, I think I'm fine. I got it driven in 
to the point where there are previous marks. Uh, it might have gone a little bit farther, but those might have been the original marks. This, I think, was done by the machine shop. So anyway, it's not moving any more than this, so I can go ahead and uh, bash in that little uh, notch in order to lock it in place, and then I can put the dust cap on. Well, I've cleaned up the control arms, and it all looks really good. I've taken them outside, squirted them with some paint, and uh, now they're good and protected from rusting any further. Uh, these control arms, especially the lowers, are going to get also a spritz of rubberized undercoating, so I'm not doing any kind of clear or anything like that. Uh, just because there's going to be another layer going on later on once it is all on the car. So uh, this one I have not yet put in the new bushings. The passenger side is done. Uh, there's a slight difference between how I did the passenger side and uh, that is namely in uh, how I painted it. Um, so on the passenger side I shot the paint and then uh, I cleaned up all the overspray like inside the, uh, the cylinders where the bushings go after I painted. And you can see um, I'm going to have to hit it one more time with the bushings in uh, just to get everything nice and tidy. But over here, before I sprayed it with paint, I coated the insides of all of the holes really well with bearing grease. I actually use that grease over there because it's less sticky. Uh, this grease is more sticky. You get it on your hands, it's harder to, to remove and it's less comfortable. I, I only use this for bushings. Um, so I coated it really, really well with grease and my thought was that the paint wasn't going to stick to the grease. I could just wipe it right out with a rag and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Uh, you see on the edge there, there is just a little bit of cleanup to do, but overall on the insides, it is immaculate, it is sparkling. It is exactly what it was before I shot the paint. So a uh, really neat little trick. I'm really glad I tried that out and uh, had some good results. So next, uh, let's get the bushings into these control arms and then I will have both sides ready to go back together. Oh, my steering bellows arrived. This is from a Kawasaki mule. Uh, pretty much all Kawasaki mules. Now, I was really hoping that it would be shorter than this, and uh, this is a stock bellows for comparison, and you can see it is definitely shorter, but there are uh, more bellows in the accordion. So it's almost kind of like a wash, because when you crush them down to the height of the uh, original bellows, you end up with kind of the same thing. So... There's, they're just as scrunched up, um, but it's fine. Uh, it was 20 bucks and this will fit. I have uh, tested it out and it will fit on the rack, which is great. So it's not money wasted. So one of my biggest challenges this weekend is the heat. I have to take regular breaks. So uh, I am not moving as fast as I would like, but I am keeping forward momentum and really getting still getting a lot done uh, you see here i have put the bellows on uh, the rear rack and uh, it's a little scrunchy but i think it's going to be just fine i'm of course going to wipe it down before i put it on the car and all that stuff and i have replaced these bushings over here so they required uh, a little bit of trimming in order to get to fit and they're they don't feel perfect uh, but i think I'm pretty sure that once I drive the bolt in, it will uh, squish the bushing in place and it's going to be just fine. Uh, this bushing also required a little bit of trimming. This is the piece that I had to trim off. It's, it's a little thick, but I think also once the, it's, it really is just a strap that goes around here. And I think that's going to crunch it down as much as it needs to go. Uh, over there, uh, this is where we are trimming the control arms. This one has already been trimmed and I've shot some paint on it to uh, cover up uh, the exposed metal. And this is actually ready to go together right now. And finally, let's take a look at the car itself because I have been doing stuff on the car. Uh, the dust caps are on the steering knuckles. Those are ready to go in. I've also put in the lower control arms on both sides and I've reconnected them to the radius rods. That was kind of, kind of a, it wasn't all that fun. I don't enjoy working on the ground. Uh, 
you know the reason is because i've got a pile of tools here i've got a pile of tools there a bunch of dirt in between and it's like i if i need to go over there for something i have to pick the creeper up put it down over there lay down on the creeper move under the car and then do the one thing and then come back out get up pick the creeper up put it back down here lay down and it's it's like it's 10 times the effort of just having the car on a lift and just walking from one place to the other. It's 10 times the amount of work. And I just, I, I really can't stand not having a lift. But anyway, uh, the lower control arms are on and uh, the shock is not bolted up. That's why it looks all floppy, it's because it is. That said, I'm really happy with the progress I'm making so far. I'm going to continue on with the upper control arms and hopefully when I check back in with you, they will be on the car. The upper arms are installed. This is really exciting because now I can put the steering knuckle on if I wanted to. Uh, I'm not gonna quite do that yet. I'm actually gonna start by installing the steering rack and then kinda play it by ear from there. I still want to raise the rear end up a little bit too. So once I get the other shock uh, reinstalled over there. I'm going to uh, kind of turn the bottom mount out a few threads and just kind of see where that leaves us. Over here the steering rack is ready to install. I have put the other arm on and the boot on. Uh, all the bushings are in place and I got to say it kind of does look a little bit goofy with red bushings and blue bellows but you know what it's fine. Uh, you're going to see a whole lot less of this red once it's installed so uh, we'll see how it looks when we get there. It's not like I plan to do anything about it. If it looks goofy, it looks goofy. It'll draw attention to the steering rack. And people will say, ooh, ah, look at that four-wheel steering rack. And not, oh, look at how goofy it looks with, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I need to uh, paint something white in there. Uh, maybe I should have painted the uh, tie rods white to give it like a full American kind of feel. It is the 4th of July after all. I was having a bit of difficulty getting this U-joint on, and rather than yell and scream at my car all day, I decided to pull the steering shaft. It wasn't terribly difficult. All I had to do was pick up my creeper, put it over here, roll underneath the car, pop off the front U-joint, and drop the heat shield for the exhaust. And since the exhaust is already dropped, it came out without any problems, and the steering shaft just slid right out the front. Now that it's off, I got to take a closer look at it. I started to clean it up and I noticed some corrosion here and there uh, just throughout the steering shaft. It wasn't that bad. There were only three spots here, here, and here. Uh, I have brushed it with the wire brush and then uh, put down some primer. I'm gonna do kind of standard procedure. Uh, two coats of primer, and then I'm going to use the rubberized undercoating. Uh, most of this is actually hit with rubberized undercoating at some point. You can see that texture here uh, really kind of made it hard to uh, wipe with the paper towel and carb cleaner. But uh, once I get that all sorted out, this will go back in. Unfortunately, that means that this is pretty much stuck here for the day. Uh, once I get the primer and the rubberized undercoating on, I kind of have to let it sit overnight to cure. And that's going to give me time to figure out what to do about a dust boot here. So we have a dust boot on one side. This is uh, the back side. Uh, but I do not have a dust boot for the front side. And I'm wondering what I can do about this. Uh, U-joint dust boots are fairly commonplace. But uh, this is a different size because of uh, the steering shaft. So the steering shaft is a little bit thicker than you might expect from... Um, a normal steering shaft. So it's a little bit tricky to find something that's gonna fit. Wow, I haven't seen it like this in a while now. I am really, really happy. Um, this is a really good weekend. I got the entire suspension back together with the exception of the rear rack and the sway bar. Now the sway bar gets in the way of the rear rack, so I'm doing that dead last, uh, but the rack is waiting on the steering shaft. I want to get the steering shaft back up in the tunnel before I start messing with the rack because it's going to be uh, tricky. It's, it's not going to be a fun thing to do, but it's going to happen and uh, I'll figure it out. Well, I went and got a generic steering rack bellows that I knew was going to fit 
on this U-joint, and guess what? It seems to have worked perfectly. Uh, I didn't have to modify this end at all. It was able to just stretch right on. I threw on a zip tie, and now I just have to, you know, snip, snip, you know. Probably not something you want to do to a 33-year-old human, but 33-year-old car, you know, just, uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. The rack is on, and yes, it does look goofy. But that's okay. It's all polyurethane, and uh, the bellows seem to be, I don't know, in good shape at least. So getting this thing on was... <laughs> was a journey to say the least um it was it was not easy because mainly because i did not drop the gas tank see if i had dropped the gas tank it would have been a lot easier to get my hands up in there to connect the steering shaft but because i lost my deep socket that i need to uh loosen these bolts here let's see if i can roll up there yeah that one so I lost that deep socket. I think it's a 14 mil. Uh, so it's it's gone. So I had a lot more difficulty uh, reconnecting the rack because I had to get my hands up there. And in order to get my hands up there, I had to drop the subframe, which I have not bolted back up yet. I need to remember to do that. I had to drop the subframe a little bit, not all the way, just uh, loosen it so that I could bring it down. Uh, and that was so that I could get the rack up into the cradle here. And uh, really, because the rack is a little bit heavy, especially when you're doing it one-handed on your back, uh, I had to reach in and kind of feed the th uh, steering shaft onto the rack, just get it on there. And finally, after uh, a bit of struggle, I was able to get the steering shaft on there. So... I was like, okay, this is great. Now all I have to do is bolt everything back up, push the steering shaft onto the pinion, and thread the bolt in. So uh, I did all of that. I bolted this up. I bolted the subframe up, tightened it all down, and I had to go to the other side of the gas tank to grab onto the steering shaft over here and push it. Of course, when I did that, I pushed it right off the pinion. It fell right off. So... I had to unbolt the rack, take the rack out, drop the subframe, and do it all over again. And so finally that time I got it on there and I was smart enough to uh, get the steering shaft on without dropping it off. So now all I have to do is cinch down a few bolts. Uh, once the paint I put on this bracket dries, I could put this bracket back on. After that, the rear steering rack will be done. I mean, I need to put the wheels on and, you know, connect the uh, tie rod ends. I suppose I can do the tie rod ends now that it's all done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, though, I think I'm going to get a start on the exhaust because now that everything is all connected up there, I've, had, I've got the uh, four-wheel steering system completely reconnected. Uh, I really think it might be time to put the exhaust back on. Well, I've got the new downpipe on, and I've got to say, it looks great. Uh, it was not without its issues because the flange up here where it connects to the header was a little bit thicker than the original. So I just had to match up some bolts in my toolbox, and uh, that went on no problem. Uh, the shape is slightly different. You see it kind of like goes down a little bit here and whatnot, but... Uh, it is overall a very good fit. You can't expect exact for an aftermarket reproduction. And uh, where it connects to the catalytic converter, I had to put the new ring on, and that all went together okay, uh, except putting the new gasket ring, the crush, the crush metal washer gasket thing, uh, that kept falling out, so it was uh, pretty frustrating. Uh, laying on the ground trying to hold the thing in while I'm connecting the thing to the thing and yeah it was it was a little bit annoying but uh, it went together just fine and it is very 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 worth it it looks great uh, I hope it sounds a little bit better too uh, it's not that I was having a major problem with the sound just that I could tell I had an exhaust leak and you see uh, the hangers I used a uh, stock replacement rubber there 
And that's because there was just no way I was going to get those polyurethane on there. Uh, but I did use a polyurethane to hang the mid pipe just before the exhaust collector. Uh, way, way, way down at the end there. You see right about there, there's the uh, red uh, exhaust hanger there. Well, that's actually going to wrap it up for this video. I know I didn't get as far as I wanted to get during this uh, 4th of July weekend, but I had a lot of fun. I worked at a great pace. I got a lot done. And in fact, I got a lot more done than I thought I was going to have to do. So I guess that's still a good thing. And honestly, I could have pushed through it. I could have kind of raced to the finish line and uh, gotten the wheels on, got the thing aligned and taken it for a drive. But I did not want to rush it. Uh, like I've been saying, I want to have fun. I'm here to have fun. And I wanted to kind of work at a relaxed pace. And also, my friends wanted to hang out for the 4th of July. These people are family to me. Um, you know, you've got, you've got your actual family, but you also have your chosen family. And, um, and those are the people that you will do anything for. Those are the people that you'll go beyond, um, you know, for me, chosen family transcends all. That, that is literally what marriage is. That is your chosen family. I guess that's a good place to leave it off. If you like what you see, like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you don't like what you see, maybe you don't like freedom. Leave a comment. I'll see you next week.